Okay, now that we have some walls that are starting to come together in place, let's look at editing and adding to those walls. So the first thing to note is any time that I have a wall, and this is something that Revit really does excel at, I can come in and change the properties of that walls, uh, of those walls sort of at liberty. So just by selecting any of the walls, it's going to switch to the wall properties. And I can simply say that should be a 12 inch wall or that should be a five inch wall. And I can do those things really quickly and easily at random. I can do them one at a time. I can highlight them. I can tell them all to change to a specific type while I'm working. And so that's kind of the whole point of Revit. Um, Revit isn't about a rivet. That's a different spelling. It's short for revision edit. And that's the mode of thinking that the software is all about, okay? So anytime that you're working on things, really quick and easy to select and modify objects. So for instance, one of the first things I'm, go I'm going to do here is drop all those things back down to level two. So I'm going to hover over one wall. And if you remember, the tab key is going to be selection options. So by hovering over one wall, hitting the tab key once, I can select all the walls. Sometimes that's a faster way than doing the lasso. I'm going to attach all of those walls to level two. And now let's look at putting in doors and windows. So the door tool is pretty simple. I'm just going to select door. I'm going to select a door type. So typically we're going to do a 36 inch wide door. That's one of the first things you want to look for. And then I can place the door anywhere along the base. Notice it's not going to let me float the door up high. It will put a door in a wall that's too short, which is kind of odd. But uh, essentially, it's going to put it in reasonably correct for me. So that is what a door starts to look like in plan. OK, that's a simple, solid door with trim around it and everything. If I look at that in plan, you can see it's placed that door in its correct location um, where I've selected in 3D. If I select the door, I have a couple of options. So I have which direction the door is opening, inside or outside. So typically, uh, if it's a commercial door, it's going to be opening to the outside. If it's a residential door, it's going to be opening to the inside. And I've got the hand of the door, which side it is opening to. Let's just do something like that. So if you notice, I place that door in the model, uh, looking at the axonometric view, you can also do the exact same thing in terms of placing a door in plan view. And that's also going to show up exactly where you want it to in terms of the 3D model. Cool? Pretty simple. Now, if I've got a door that is a different door type that I would like that isn't in the list that you currently see. So right now I have just single flush, and then I've already added in a double door sliding. But let's say I'd like a double door someplace right around here. I see a lot of students do something like this, which is awkward and inaccurate, unless you really want two doors with a funny spot to hit your head on right there in the middle. What you want to do is go to door and then load family. This should take you to or close to the doors folder. Um, of which you can scroll through the additional door types. So let's just do a door double glass. So that's two doors with glass panels. From this list, I'm just going to select the 6068. And then I can place those wherever I'd like to in the plan view. Cool, so pretty simple stuff to do. Let's kind of slide that over to the side because the next thing that I want to do is add in a window. So the window tool works really similar to the door tool. Again, while you're learning Revit, I would like for you for the most part, um, in terms of standard windows, and that by standard windows, I mean a window that's a punched opening into a wall, stick with the fixed window type, okay? It's going to work um, as you would anticipate it to work. Um, it doesn't have a lot of geometry in it. Um, you can go to some window websites, um, Pella, Marvin, et cetera, and use their specific brands of windows, which are nice, but a lot of them have, will have more geometry in that window model than your entire building, which is going to bog your computer down. These are simple, straightforward, and nice to use. 
However, you'll notice there's not a lot of size options. So we're going to get into their properties here in just a second. So placing a window, very simple. I can just come in and place it just by single clicking in plan. If I look at that in the elevation, you can see it's placed that 24 by 24 inch window into the model. Unlike a door, I can really move that anywhere I'd like, I'd like to along the wall. Um, so you can see right now the sill of the window is 111. Maybe I want to set that right at three feet. So I know this is a 24 inch window. The top of it would be at five feet, exactly at the wrong height for being able to see out. So maybe I want to actually set that. Let's set that at um, five feet too high, four feet. There we go. Something like that. It makes a nice little itty bitty window to sneak a peek out of. But let's say this wall, I would like a larger window. And that is where we can start editing our properties. So I'm going to start out just by placing a 24 inch by 24 inch window right in the middle of that wall. Okay. And there's something I do want to, do want to point out really quickly. If you'll notice, um, this window right now is set deep into the wall, and this one is set pretty shallow into the wall, right? That is because this is the interior of the window right here. So it's actually facing the wrong direction. Let's look at that in floor plan really quick. It's a simple little thing, but something that you really don't want to get wrong, okay? Makes you look like a newbie, okay? Really simple switch right there. Typically, we want that glass close to the outside edge of the wall, simply for weatherproofing, waterproofing, things like that. Sometimes there are reasons to push them far to the inside, but that's certainly not your default. Okay, sidebar over. So let me change the size of this window. I can do that by selecting the window and going into my properties panel and saying edit type. So this is a 24 by 24. I want to change the height and the width of this window. And I can do that by clicking duplicate because I don't want to overwrite my 24 by 24. Let's make this a six feet foot wide by four foot tall window. So I'm just going to name it a six by four. On my height, four feet. On my width, six feet. So I've got those updated. It is a new type, so it's going to be listed with all of my other windows. I can click OK, and it's immediately going to resize that. I also really, really want that place. Like, that bothers me, right? I want that height to match the door height. So I should be able to go to my north elevation. Maybe not south elevation. There we go. And I'm just going to put a, a temporary guideline. I'm going to go to annotate detail line and just draw a line right wow that was really awful draw a line right across just like that and then i can move that window so the top of that window matches the top of my door and then delete the temporary line ah next thing man it should be centered too ah, it looks terrible another detail line and there are multiple ways to do this for sure, right? But this is just the quick way to do it using a little bit of geometry and a little bit of drafting. I'm going to move the center of that window. So make sure I'm getting my center. Very interesting. Usually looking for a triangle on the center point. Looks like that did it just fine. Delete my guides and I've got that window matching the header height of the door, nice big window right there, and used essentially the properties panel to make a new window type at the size that I wanted using that default fixed window. 